Once students have been through the Systems, Signals, DSP and FFT pack, they can move on to the Communications and Digital Radio Techniques course. This course allows students to construct an experiment on a wide range of systems placed on SIS blocks. Students use a panel with three SIS blocks on to create a sequence of communication modulators and encoders. They can add noise and then demodulate and decode the signals. In doing so, students understand the parameters of communication systems, including phase lock loop performance, signal to noise ratios, bit error rates, and the principles of digital radio techniques. The communication systems students investigate include PLLs, AM, FM, OOK, ASK, FSK, BPSK, QAM, QPSK, and DSSS. Students work with pre-written programs for SysBlox, but there is also plenty of chance for creative programming using FlowCode for the more advanced students who will find that the SysBlox panel and FlowCode combination provide the perfect platform for experimentation with digital comms. The hardware platform includes three SysBlox panels, Encode Modulate, Decode Demodulate, and a Noise Generator, and a Mixer Board. Welcome to a demonstration of SysBlox for communications or for teaching communications. And what I've got in front of me is I've got one of our SysBlox communication panels and on it you can see there are three SysBlox board. We've got a modulator or encoder or a transmitter. We've got a demodulator, decoder, receiver. We've got some noise and we've got a mixer board. And the idea is that you can set up a communication system with a transmit, receive and noise where the, the noise is mixed into the signal between the transmitter and receiver, and you can set up a lot of different communication systems and do experiments with it. The hardware comes with some curriculum, which we'll talk about later, but also some software, in this case, FlowCode. And you can see here in front of you that here's a typical FlowCode program. And a FlowCode program consists of two parts. It consists of a data flow program, you can see here, and this is a mimic for the SysBlox board itself with displays and encoders, switches and ADs. And also there is a program that you can see here. Now the program is really simple. Um, it basically has a, a main routine that just sets up uh, the system itself. And then it has an interrupt service routine. And we're interrupting probably at a couple of hundred thousand uh, samples per second. And the interrupt service routine basically just runs a macro for each of these data flow icons that says effectively execute or do what you do. Now, what, what I've got in, um, in the transmit syslog, I've got an amplitude modulation transmitter. And this program here is a receiver. So you can see in the AM receiver, we take the input signal, we rectify it, filter it, we multiply it by two and we put it onto the output. And if you're familiar with amplitude modulation receivers um, in a more analog sense, you'll know that an AM receiver is really quite a simple circuit consisting of a um, rectifying diode and a capacitor for a filter. And this mimics that, but in a digital domain. So the interrupt service routine uh, kicks off at 200,000 samples a second each one of these icons executes and sends a signal from the input to the output. So, and what we do basically in the communications pack for SysBlox is we provide a whole load of pre-written programs, uh, each one of which teaches a particular aspect of communications. So in this case, there are two programs. I'm showing you the AMD modulator here and what we ask students to do is just compile those programs to the SysBlox target. So I'll just compile this to the receiver now. Okay, so we've compiled that uh, program. Um, I've got, going back to the equipment, going into the SysBlox transmitter, I've got a radio. On the receiver, I've got a couple of speakers. They're plugged into the line-in sockets in the SysBlox. Um, the whole system's set up now, so if I just connect um, the channel by connecting one sysblock to another, then you can hear the audio coming out. I'll check if you can remember how the dialer is performed. Not on this scale. So what you can hear is that the audio from the line in is modulated in analog modulation that's put out onto a single wire that's received 
um, by the second cis block and it's now demodulated and fed to a speaker. Now we can look at that on oscilloscopes and things and we can put in waveforms and we can teach all sorts of aspects about AM and we can teach about FM as well. Uh, so we teach about how um, chips these days are at the heart of all modern radio systems. Uh, the days of analog circuitry to do AM and FM are uh, pretty much gone. So having seen the demonstration of AM, um, what we do in the learning materials is take students through a number of concepts to look at digital communications. So we're looking at phase lock loops and we're looking in particular at um, phase modulation of various different kinds. Frequency modulation, phase modulation, quadrature phase modulation and uh, octal phase modulation. And we take students through the various concepts. Again, what they do is they download different programs to the sys blocks and carry out experiments, most of which involve an oscilloscope to look at signals. And then towards the end of the package, what we do with students is we start to explain to them how packets of information can be put together uh, to transmit information between a transmitter and receiver and they can be put together using the various different modulation schemes. And to do that, we have written this application. Uh, and in this application, you can choose a different carrier frequency, the board rate, and you can choose some information which um, relates to the types of packets, the number of cycles of preamble, so the phase lock loop can sync, and the group length, or the number of data bytes in a, uh, in a packet. And you can choose the modulation scheme. And so if we take these settings here for on-off keying, we can enter a string. In this case, hello world. And we can transmit that string between the transmitter and receiver. And this is where the third sys block comes in because what we can do is we can inject noise into that signal and we can see how robust the, the channel is. And if I just set up a beaker scope here, what I've got is I've got um, the blue trace here is the data output and the red trace is the channel. And if we set it to have a single trigger, um, again, what I can do is I can transmit information uh, using on off keying and I can see the data coming in. So this is the data which has been received by the receiver and you can see with simple on-off key, key, I've just got bursts of carrier there. Let's do the same thing again for amplitude shift key and we'll send that packet of data there. Um, here you can see that a one is represented by a large amplitude and a zero is represented by a small amplitude. So you can see that how the amplitude shift key works. So I can send a string, I can transmit and receive, and I can increase the amount of noise in the system. So we'll do that briefly for ASK. If I go to the noise generating system and I say that the noise level is say uh, minus 12 dB and I retransmit that, you should be able to see now that there are some errors in that transmission. Oh no, it's doing pretty well. So let's give it a, a few more dB of noise, at minus six dB, and we've got 7% errors there. So you can see the hello world is just a bit corrupted. So that's how that app works. And it gets really interesting when we start to move to the more complex um, phase shift keying systems. So in this case, let's just take a look at how um, QPSK is transmitted. So if I set up um, I put the noise back down to 0 dB, I set up a, a simple transmission of QPSK and if I trigger the scope again, and send a byte, you can see that now of course it's very difficult to see the phase shifts in the transmitted signal, uh, but you can just see phase shifts at certain times. Um, and so what we need now is a different way of viewing that. And what we can do here is we can add a new view. Uh, we'll add an XY view to the system. 
And what I'll do is I'll, rather than looking at the transmission data or the transmission signal uh, and one of the outputs, what I'm going to do is just change the connections to the sysblock because the program puts out the I and Q uh, channels on the receiver. And what we can do is we can use an XY plot to show the signals in a constellation diagram. So I'll just trigger that again and send a packet of data. And uh, you should be able to see that there is a really nice uh, a really nice constellation diagram showing the four points of the QPS key, QPSK signal. And you can see the I and Q uh, there. And what we get students to do is, is manually dissect a couple of packets so they can see how the data is transmitted um, in this particular case. And we can, we can go up to eight QPSK. Let's try that uh, and see if that works. Again, let's trigger the scope and look for 8 QPSK and see the data there. So you can see the eight, eight data points. And of course the program, what the program is doing is it's, it's detecting whether the data is at one of these points in the constellation. And then that uh, allows it to regenerate the original data signal.